Okay, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do the V5 testbed exercise one here. Now you'll notice that my background screen, my home screen, looks different than yours because I have to do this on a MacBook uh, because the MacBook has a microphone and the Windows computers do not. So that's why I'll have to do this on a MacBook. But yours will look a little bit different because you need to use the Windows computer. It's the same icon though, it's this red square, it says V5, has the black V. That's what you want to open up. Yours will probably be down here in the bottom left corner somewhere. You're going to use your mouse and make the pointer go on top of it and then double click with the mouse. If you don't know how to use a mouse, there's a left button and a right button. You want to click the left button two times on this icon and it will open up. When it opens up, hopefully it looks something like this. Now, if you have connected your brain correctly, your brain icon right here will turn green. If it is yellow or red, you need to raise your hand and let me know because it, you, your code will not work no matter what if this is yellow or red. No, even if you have it written perfectly, uh, yellow or red means your computer is not communicating with the brain correctly. Now, one problem may be, uh, if yours is yellow or red, a problem may be that you don't have the cord plugged in. You need to have a cord plugged into the brain and plugged into the, a USB port on your computer. You also need to have a battery that is plugged into your brain and your brain turned on. If you've done those things and this is still yellow or red, then you haven't updated the firmware on your brain yet. Uh, and if you just raise your hand and ask me, I'll show you how to do that. But you were supposed to do that yesterday. All right. Now, what assignment are we going to be working on? If you open up the module section of Canvas here, you want to find the assignment called V5 Testbed Exercise 1. You could also go to the assignment section if you want, but that's the one you want, V5 Testbed Exercise 1. All right, we are going to accomplish these three things right here. Number one, we are going to run motor one clockwise at 50% velocity for five seconds and then stop it. Now the stop is a command that we will have to use. Sometimes kids forget the stop part, but it is an important part of the code. If you don't put the stop, the motor will just keep on running. So we have to tell the motor to turn on, we have to tell it the velocity, we have to tell it how long to turn on, we have to tell it, I forgot to say this part, you have to tell it the direction, and then you have to tell it to stop and turn off. So a lot of commands here in order to do a simple task of making the motor run. Okay, then we're going to do motor two. This time we're going counterclockwise, so it's a different direction. We're going at a different velocity for a different amount of time, two and a half seconds. Whoops, don't want to do that. And then we're going to read, or not read, we're going to run motors one and two clockwise at the same time at 100% velocity for 7.25 seconds and then stop. All right, so lots of things we need to accomplish here. So we're going to go back to the code screen here. And the first thing you'll need to do is tell the brain what kind of devices are connected to it. It cannot sense that automatically. To do this, we need to find this icon right here. It's supposed to look like the connector that's at the end of the motor cord. Uh, it all, and that kind of connector is also used in an old school uh, landline. Uh, if you've ever seen one of those, it's how the phone plugged into the wall. So we click that and it should say add a new device. So we want to click add a new device. And what we want to add right now is a motor. So we're going to click the motor. And you may have plugged yours into a different number. I've plugged mine into one and two. Uh, if you have plugged yours into a different number, then you will need to choose whatever number it's plugged into. Um, I'm going to check and make sure that my left motor is plugged into one, because I don't remember which one I plugged it into and I've got a really long cord that I'm untangling right now and okay so my left motor is in one and my right motor is in two now so you'll want to do the same thing make sure your left motor is in one and your right motor is in two so I'm gonna pick one notice it says motor one you can change that name to left motor if you want and then click done all right, I'm going to add another device, motor. It is plugged into port 2. You can change that to right motor if you want. Done. And now I have my motor set up. Notice a, a lot of new options popped up over here 
once my brain realized there was motors connected to it. This is how I'm going to control my motor. If yours doesn't pop up these options, you may need to click the little blue circle. If that blue circle doesn't show up, raise your hand, let me know. All right, so back to our assignment. The first thing we need to do is run motor one clockwise, 50% velocity, five seconds, and then stop. All right, so we're going to go back here. Motor one, so we want to spin motor one, and we want to um, okay, so we're going to spin motor one forward. Is that right? Oh, no, I know, I know something didn't look right. That's not the one we want. We want this one. No, that's set velocity. Okay, so we do want that one. Spin motor one forward. Okay, now we need to tell it the velocity. So set the velocity. Actually, we need to do that before we spin it forward. We need to set the velocity first. And then we need to run it for a certain amount of time. So in order to do that, we're going to use this weight right here. If you didn't see how I got to that, I clicked the gold control section, and we want that weight. And then after that, it's going to stop. Okay, now if we look back at our assignment, it says we want the velocity to be at 50%, which we already have. We need it to go clockwise. We don't know if forward is clockwise or backward is clockwise yet, so we'll have to find that out. Five seconds and then stop. So I need to change my time here to five seconds and then stop. So it should spin motor one at 50% forward for five seconds and then stop. Now in order to run this, I'm going to click download right here. Uh, you can save, if you want to save your project, then you would click OK. Now yours is going to look a little bit different than mine. I would give it a name like test bed, whoop, test bed one, and then you want to save it to your H drive. Uh, if you're not sure how to save to your H drive, you'll just have to raise your hand and let me know because I can't do this on my Windows computer. I can only do it on my MacBook, and MacBook automatically brings up my H drive. Um, so if you don't know how to find your H drive, uh, you'll just have to raise your hand and ask me, and I can show you. All right, so I'm going to give it the name Testbed1 and save it. And that way, uh, if I don't get done today, I can go back and access this program later, or like tomorrow, uh, or during seminar time, and I don't have to start all the way over at the beginning. Okay, now I'm going to have to, so I just saved it. I'm going to have to download it again. So I'm going to click download. The download is what sends it to your brain. Okay, now the brain has a touch screen on it that you can use to run your program or you can use these buttons right here, run and stop. So I'm gonna click the run button right here and you'll probably hear the motor running and it is going clockwise. It was the left motor and it went clockwise. So we guessed correctly. Now if your motor goes the wrong direction, well first off, if it's not the left motor, let me go back and check and make sure it said left motor. Oh, it just says motor one, not left motor. Okay, so we're on motor one, so that'll work. So motor one, ran at 50%. Now, if it ran the wrong direction, you'll click here and click reverse. And then anytime you make a change to your code, you have to download it to your brain. And then, again, you can click run here, or I can just use the run on my um, brain. I'm going to use the touch screen this time. Click run. And it is going the opposite direction. Now, sometimes in the past, we've had issues with if a student chooses forward or reverse, it still does not change the direction. And I don't know why that happens. But if that happens to you, what you can do is change this from 50 to negative 50. And that will also make it go the opposite direction. So I'm going to download it. Now, notice I changed this back to forward but my velocity is at negative 50%, and if I run it now, it goes counterclockwise. So you can change the direction either way. You can change the velocity 
to a negative number, or you can click this and change it to reverse. I don't know why some of them work when I change this direction and some of them do not, but that is uh, what you'll want to use right there. All right, so we've got the first part. Oh, wait, I've got it running the wrong direction, so I'm going to change that back to 50. Okay, now the second part, we need to run motor 2. So I'm going to set motor 2 velocity first. Now make sure you don't pick spin at volts. We don't want to pick the volts down here. Uh, that, for whatever reason, makes the motors lock. So do not pick this one with volts. Always pick the velocity that has the percent at the end. Okay, so this one's going to be motor 2. Uh, it was 75%. And we want it to go the opposite direction, so I'm going to spin, or I'm going to click spin motor, make sure I change this to 2, and I'm going to choose reverse. And this one, I don't remember how long it was supposed to go. Run motor 2, 75%, 2 and a half seconds. <clears throat> so I'm going to click gold, find my weight, change it to 2.5, and then make sure you put in to stop it and choose motor 2. All right, so we've made a change to our code, so we need to download it and then run it. Okay, my motor, my left motor is spinning clockwise right now. Now my left motor, my motor two, is spinning counterclockwise, and they and it stopped. So the exact correct scenario. All right, now this the last part is we need motor one and two to go at the same time in the same direction. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to set the where was it at? Oh, set the velocity. That's right. Set velocity. We're going to need two of them because we are spinning two motors. And make sure we change this to motor two. And we wanted them both at 100. That's what the assignment said. Okay. Now we're going to spin both motors. So we want to spin motor one. And we need a second one to spin motor two. And when we did this before, we found out that clockwise was forward. Uh, if your clockwise is not forward, you may need to change this, or you may need to change the velocity up here. Okay, we want to wait. What did it say? 7.25 seconds. Now, here's the part that gets a little confusing to kids. We need two commands to set the velocity, because there's two motors, and we need two commands to start the motors, but we only use one wait time. Because it's like we told the robot to start these motors, but then we only use one wait time. If you put wait twice, it's going to wait 7.25 seconds, then it's going to wait 7.25 seconds again, which is 14 and a half seconds, and that's way too long. So we only have one wait time. But we do need to have two stops. So we have two of everything except the wait time. And then make sure you change this to motor two. All right, now I'm going to download my code to my robot. I'm going to play it. My right motor, sorry, my motor one is spinning clockwise like it should. Motor two now is going counterclockwise. And now both motors are going clockwise. And they stopped. So everything worked exactly how it should work. Once you've got this all done, you're going to raise your hand and show it to me so that I can mark you down for credit.